Dear students, you are watching now the third chapter of the skull demonstration. In this video, I'd like to talk about the external base of the skull. Um, in order to show it uh, easier, I remove the mandible. It was now so quick and easy. As you can see, the anterior one third uh, belongs to the visceral cranium. Um, so I won't talk about the part of the visceral cranium in this video, but uh, in the following episode of the skull demonstration, you are going to uh, watch, you can watch and also listen to the parts of the visceral cranium. So from here to there, um, I like to show you first the palpable points uh, of the external base of the skull and then junctions, connections, holes and other structures of the external base of skull. So let's start with a couple of palpable points. Previously I already showed you this one. Uh, you can touch this um, bony part um, in your occipital bone in the Numha region. This is the um, external occipital protuberance here. And then you can see the Numha lines, the, the superior and the inferior Numha line of this and uh, in the middle you can see the external occipital crest. Another palpable point is here. It is called mastoid process. The mastoid process contains the mastoid air cells. These are air filled uh, cells, air filled spaces which are in connection with the middle ear with the tympanic cavity. And they have clinical importances because uh, um, an infection or uh, inflammation of this can spread to uh, the internal base of the skull and can cause also, um, or they may cause uh, sinusitis or meningitis. But uh, for more details, please check the clinical relevancy in the lecture. Um, you can see here, there, uh, blue and red areas because the mastoid process is the uh, insertion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So another good visible and palpable point is here. This one is the styloid process. Uh, as you can see the styloid process is um, colored with red. That means this is an origin. Uh, actually, the styloid process is the origin of three muscles, the three stylo muscles. One is the stylohyoid, another is the styloglossal, and the third one is the stylopharyngeal. If you go medially from the styloid process, and you can see here this foot shaped or shoe shaped uh, occipital condyle. The occipital condyle is an articulating surface in the atlantic occipital joint. The big hole is called foramen magnum. Um, you already seen the passing through structures in the demonstration video of the internal base of skull, but now I'd like to uh, tell you again these structures. One and the most important is the spinal cord there you can find the transition between the spinal cord and the medulla oblongata and of course the meninges um, you can find here the two vertebral arteries the internal and external venous plexus you can find here the uh, roots two spinal roots of the accessory nerve here the uh, anterior spinal artery, there you can find the two posterior spinal arteries and uh, in this hole you can also find the cerebrospinal fluid spaces but these are in connection with the uh, meninges because uh, that's actually the subarachnoidal space. Um, the outer surface of the um, basilar part of the occipital bone. You can see here a rough surface. This rough surface is 
cold pharyngeal tubercle. So this is uh, one origin of the pharynx, pharyngeal muscles. This is not so big, but you can see there, here, the spinous process, this one. Okay, so let's see the junctions. Um, laterally from the pharyngeal tubercle, you can see here the foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum is... Um, <coughs> So laterally from the pharyngeal tubercle, you can see the foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum uh, contains cartilage, and you find here the greater and the lesser uh, petrosal nerves. Uh, what are the other? If you can see uh, this. So laterally from the foramen lacerum, you can see here the foramen ovale. Unfortunately, in this car, this is not so oval shaped. So let's change on the other skull and here you can see this better so this is the foramen ovale uh, with the mandibular nerve posterior and laterally from the foramen ovale you can see here the foramen spinosum and the foramen spinosum contains the middle meningeal artery the middle meningeal artery is uh, the biggest artery that supplies the dura mater and after it uh, enters into the middle scala or middle uh, cranial fossa, uh, it uh, runs in the epidural space. Now changing back to the uh, colorful skull, you can see here the jugular foramen there. There you can see the jugular foramen, and this is on the other side. The jugular foramen has uh, two parts because this is incompletely divided by the interjugular process, which is in the middle here. The medial part contains uh, cranial nerves, the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th, so the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, and the accessory nerve and uh, you find here in the medial part uh, the posterior meningeal artery this is also one artery that supplies the dura mater and then the lateral part here you can see the beginning of the uh, internal jugular vein uh, this part of the uh, jugular foramen is deeper and uh, here you can see the jugular fossa with the bulk of the internal jugular vein. If we go lateral we see here between the mastoid and the styloid process the stylomastoid foramen. The stylomastoid foramen is the outlet of the facial canal. You find here the facial nerve uh, with its uh, somatomotor fibers, somatomotor branches, and these somatomotor branches of the facial nerve are responsible to innovate the facial expression muscles. And uh, there is one somatosensory branch of the facial nerve here, uh, which innovates the skin behind the ear. Um, if we go back on the occipital condyle, we see here a canal there and sometimes there um, this is the condylar canal the condylar canal con uh, contains the uh, condylar emissary so uh, inside of this you find an emissary vein which is a connection between the external and internal venous um, spaces of the skull another canal which is perpendicular to the uh, long axis of the condyle is here. We can see better from the uh, inside. There, it goes like this. 
this is the hypoglossal volcano with the hypoglossal nerve. Um, so now we go there. This is anteriorly from the jugular foramen. We see here the carotid cadum, the opening of the carotid canal with the internal carotid artery and the um, carotid plexus. This is a uh, nerve plexus uh, which contains postganglionic sympathetic uh, visceral motor fibers between the condylar canal and the um, jugular foramen. You see the fossula petrosa. The fossula petrosa is the uh, opening of the tympanic cavicles with the tympanic nerve that goes into the tympanic cavity. I already show you the foramen lacerum there and um, I'd like to show you here the front of the foramen lacerum this here the scaphoid fossa and laterally from the scaphoid fossa we can see here the pterygoid fossa and the pterygoid fossa which is here again we find the opening of the uh, pterygoid canal the pterygoid canal contains the greater petrosa nerve that goes into the uh, pterygopalatine fossa which is uh, here way below but where we find actually the pterygoid fossa the pterygoid fossa is between the uh, medial and lateral uh, uh, plate of the pterygoid process so lateral and medial pterygoid uh, plate of the pterygoid process Okay, so let's see other smaller structures which are not so um, good visible sometimes, but uh, you can see these here. Here, where you see the red line, uh, this is the groove for the auditory tube. The auditory tube is a connection between the tympanic cavity and the epipharynx. And here, the closed bony canal is called um, here the muscular tuberium canal there and if we go lateral from this we can see here the petrotympanic fissure it contains the corda tympani this is a visceral motor and a visceral sensory branch of the facial nerve. W uh, at that point where we find the petrotympanic fissure, we find the mandibular fossa. And in front of the mandibular fossa, the articular tubercle. These parts of the temporal bone are the articulating surfaces. In uh, this case, the socket for the um, temporomandibular joint. And again, but well, I already show you this is the foramen spinosum and this is the foramen ovale. So these are the most important parts of the external base of skull and the structures passing through these junctions. Thank you for your attention.